yeah so hello everyone welcome to today's video so today i'm going to continue my videos on uh, pinbox 7 series so far in my videos we discussed about the difference between pinbox 6 and 7 we talked about project management principles we talked about how the project management principles you know using a guided behavior you know how do you use that project performance domain we discussed about 12 principles and eight performance domains right and then we uh, talked about tailoring for you know a couple of videos how do we tailor based on the project context right and how do we tailor each domain right we discussed about that so next very important the final section in pbox 7 is uh, the models and methods and artifacts right so how do you apply or reapply or modify or a tailor right or use different type of models methods based on a project contest and how do you produce the artifacts right that's what we are going to discuss this particular section so we're going to have a series of videos on models methods and artifacts what are the models available and what are the common models and methods available what are the artifacts we're talking about so let's thinking about an you know, overview about you know, what is what does it mean to us what is model what is a model is some thinking strategy to explain the process or the framework right so you can have multiple models like you know, leadership models motivation models a lot of different types of models available so model is nothing but a thinking strategy to explain the process or a framework right methods are nothing but means of achieving the outcome right we have an estimation methods different estimation methods available right we have uh, different ways of executing uh, projects are available right so it's a, the means of achieving the outcome the artifacts are in you know, outputs you know, templates documents or are deliverables right in today's video we're going to discuss about we are going to start with models and then in you know in future videos we talk about methods and artifacts the models and methods are being an input to the project performance domain and uh, deliverables and artifacts are being output of this right so we are going to discuss the input part of it in nearby videos and then you know, we discuss that uh, artifacts later so let's discuss about what are the commonly used models right there are models around the situation leadership communication models motivation models change models right how do you how do you go about changing right changing management models transition models Project team development models. What are the different models available for you know, project team development? And there are other models like conflict model and you know, negotiation is there. In this video, we're going to talk about situation leadership, communication, and motivation. The rest of the models we discuss in tomorrow's video. I hope I've given a, a reasonable introduction about you know models, methods, and uh, artifacts. So let's get into that um, specific models. We'll start with situation leadership model. What is a situation leadership model is all about is, it's about a project manager or leader tailoring their leadership style to meet the needs of the project team, right? So you need to adopt to or you need to evolve your leadership style to meet the needs of the project team. Right, because you know, if you, if you go with an adoptive methods like agile, how to have a servant leadership, the style of project manager may not work actually. Right, because you know, having the self-organizing team in hand, you may not go, you may not go, uh, you may not want to go for you know, uh, authoritative style of leadership. Right, so there are multiple models available in situation leadership. So situation leadership, in the sense is you are trying to adopt your leadership style on that particular situation, on the project context, right? As it moves, 
right from start to end so we'll, we'll discuss a couple of models the first one is uh, Ken Blanchard's situation leadership tool what he is talking about is what are the ways you can measure the project team development right so two important parameters he is talking about is competence and commitment competence nothing but your ability skill and knowledge of the team member commitment you know relates to confidence and motivation of that employee or a project team member so you try to uh, measure your project team members development in terms of the percent competence and his motivation level right so based on the competence and commitment you know levels as a pm or as a leader in your leadership style might evolve from directing to coaching to supporting to delegating right you can you can use appropriate styles you know uh, the people who have less competence need more directions right people have you know more competence you know and they need a more, little more you know, coaching right then the con competence increases you need just support to them and if everything is okay you delegate to them right when they when they acquire a hundred percent skill they have a motivation by themselves you just delegate and move on go ahead right so this is about you know identifying the uh, levels of competence and commitment of your team member and appropriately applying our leadership style the second model we are going to discuss in situation leadership is oscar model it is developed by karen white uh, whittleworth and andrew gilbert right so o stands for outcome so when you work with your team member you need to explain the outcome what is the long term goals of an individual you need to understand them and what is the desired results we are expecting from that person and then try to understand the current situation what are the current skill abilities what is the competency level what is the knowledge level of the team and then the choices and consequences right the potential avenues of attaining the desired outcome so what are the trainings or what are the methods it could be e learning it could be classroom training or it could be as you know uh, attending a workshop or something like that what are the different consequences of applying different methods which one is good for the organization which one good for the you know a team member so you need to figure out and go for the appropriate choices of improving the skill set and the, and then the team member commits for actions right commits to the specific improvement area in the time frame right so obviously when you go for a new technology project or a new domain project let's say you are working on a logistic domain or working on a new domain in a digital areas right so team members may have you know may not have that right say for example if you are working in a data management project you are slowly introducing machine learning and data science the team members may not have an uh, you know a desirable experience in python and you know, mathematical models available so you have to set the outcome what is the desired results what is the current situation go for choices of training python training you can go for you know uh, different models available and then commit for an action give them six months or three months of period expect a commit from the team member and then periodically review with them this is called oscar model right the second type of model commonly used model is a communication model the project's success depends on effective communication in early days the project management most of the failures happening because of ineffective communication or miscommunication when it comes to communication model it revolves around the communication between the sender and receiver the communication medium is being used what is the communication medium or mass media or what type of medium are using and what are the types of disconnects and what are the communication styles and methods different communication styles and methods adopted by the sender and receiver right so there are you know we're going to talk about three important points in communication models the first one is the cross cultural communication browsy and uh, price was talking about when there is a communication between the sender and receiver the message is influenced by the knowledge the thought process that experience 
right and the relationship between the sender and receiver right the sender is sending a message based on his or her knowledge a thought process experience they have right experience and relationship they have a, a different set of things are available similarly the receiver also has their own you know, way of knowledge they are made of experiencing things so this is how the the message is getting influenced the the communication styles is getting influenced by the knowledge and thinking and experience of the sender as well as the receiver this is the first you know communication model is been uh, you know talked about in terms of cross cultural communication and second thing about you know uh, effectiveness of the communication channels as per alistair cockburn he talks about two axes of communication channels one is effectiveness and richness right so how effectively reach the customer right that's very important how effectively communicate them the effectiveness comes you know the loss of information is very less right the richness is defined as the amount of learning that can be transmitted by the medium right so there are high rich medium right so face to face communication is a very highly rich communication point of view that's the reason agile is advocating for face to face communication that's the best communication model available in the world today actually face to face communication will have you know less loss in terms of miscommunication in terms of you know effectiveness it has high effectiveness but sending a message short message or sending a note or something like that it has you no know, it's a very less richness is there and in effectiveness also the more less so you can define the effectiveness of communication channels in a you know x and y axis using effectiveness and richness right so the uh, communication channels should help people to have effective as less well rich communication the other aspect is the gulf of execution and evaluation it's given by donald norman the gulf of execution is nothing but degree to which an item correspond with what a person expected to let's say that the person is driving a car he need to uh, looking for auto parking there should be a uh, button for an you know, auto parking should be available in you know, uh, the car but the person pushing the button but the car is not doing an automatic parking right that's called you know gulf of execution the item is expected to do an automation of auto parking but it's not doing it similarly the gulf of evacuation evaluation is the degree to which an item supports the user in discovering how to interpret the item and interact with it effectively it's the same example if the person says struggle struggle to figure out where is the system the pushing the button or something like that it is you know the item is not even available or you know it's not in the right right place so something there is a gap between the interpretation of the person and the availability of the information right so there are two things are in the effectiveness of communication is there in the you know gulf of execution you can measure that gulf of evaluation can look at so these are you know about communication models the final model we are going to discuss today is the motivation model what are the different ways of motivation you are team members there are four models we are going to discuss the first one is the hygiene and motivational factors model raised developed by frederick herzberg right there are two type of motivation we are talking about the first one type is motivational factors nothing but the content of the work the achievement the growth of advancement of that the job is giving to the you know that person right the hygiene factors are nothing but you know policy salary or physical environment all these are hygiene factors when you have a insufficient hygiene insufficient motivation and both leads to both when both the factors are insufficient both leads to dissatisfaction but when the motivation factors are sufficient when the content of the job is good you know the people are growing the team and the people are having career advancement that team people are feeling their achievement when the motivation factors are sufficient that leads to satisfaction but in case of hygiene right the sufficiency will not lead to satisfaction 
right? If are, the person is getting a right amount of salary as per the market, it's definitely, it will not dissatisfy, but at the same time, it is not going to motivate that person as well. That's called hygiene factor, right? So you need to ensure that if people are you know, paid at right salary, the environment and policies are good so that sufficiency, you know, ensure that adequacy so that you can focus on motivational factors, right? That only is the sufficiency of motivational factors only leads to the adequacy of motivational factors only leads to satisfaction, not the hygiene. The second model is talking about instinctive and eccentric motivation. So it is given by Daniel Pink. There is a many books Daniel Pink has written. You can read books like Drive and, you know, uh, and uh, many books like you know, from him. He talks about eccentrics as a salary, perks, you know, rewards, and all. You know, it's eccentric. So it seems to exist once you know fairly paid. Actually, once people are getting fairly paid, you know they okay. It's, it's kind of it's similar to hygiene factor only right in the previous model but what is important here is you know the team is much more motivated when interesting actually interesting motivation is very very important so once you satisfy the eccentric motivation you need to focus on intrinsic motivation what is interesting motivation what are the you know uh, factors around is you know you try to build autonomy mastery and purpose within your team members build autonomy give that you know freedom people to think of give the freedom people to talk give the freedom to people to execute by their own way their own ways actually give the autonomy to take decisions right all these you know the freedom giving adequate freedom is very important and helping them in mastery right so they have different people at different competency competency level so you need to help them to master that no particular domain or particular technology, whatever it is. And then clearly help them with the purpose. Defining the correct product vision, creating a company vision and vision statements are very, very important for intrinsic motivation. The third motivation model is the theory of needs created by David McKellen. He says that people are driven by achievement, a power or affiliation. Right? There is a need of achievement for that particular certain people that you know that that person may be joined as a fresher. He has initial two or three years that person need of achievement kind of achievement driven that those kind of people. Actually. Right. So then they look for leadership roles. You know, team leads or project leads. You know, there they need a little bit of power who can lead few people and give, get some power and you know delegate certain activities. They are driven by, you know, one certain level, they are, people are driven by power. And then certain, certain level, once you cross, you know, that particular, even that motivation level, people are driven by affiliation. You need a community of practice or you need a like-minded things and you, know, you need to create knowledge, uh, you know, cafes. So you can create that, you know, affiliation led motivation areas. So you need to understand when and how people are driven by these factors. So according to the need of what drives them, identify what drives them, whether it's an achievement, power, or affiliation, you can provide according to that. Your leadership style can be driven according to that. Right? So if it is an achievement, give them a you know, clear set of goals, help them to in you know, a career advancement, improve their skills and competency. If they're looking for power-driven people, you give them more people to lead, give them opportunity and autonomy to help them, you know, as leadership skills and everything. And there's an affiliation, affiliation need to create a required situation for affiliation, right? So this is about theory of needs model. The final model we're going to discuss is a theory X and theory Y and theory Z. It was given by a uh, Douglas Medraher, right? Theory X talks about that. The people are working for only for income. There is no goal oriented or ambition oriented you know, thought processes available to the employees. This is a old school of thought where it's you no know, labor intensive, uh, you know, industry is using that, you know. They think that, you know, the theory people are coming for, you know, they are uh, just for uh, livelihood and they look come for income, you know, they want to take care of family and everything. That's a, you know, a pre-knowledge economy scenario of theory X. Theory Y talks about people are motivated by, you know, 
uh, intrinsic motivation right so they are people are coming out of the hygiene factor and they are looking for you know knowledge economy looks for you know more intrinsic motivation right give them opportunity for autonomy you know mastery and purpose right then there is a theory is that right this generation of people look for you know beyond hygiene beyond you know work for income and beyond intrinsic they look for you know self realization self actualization right so value related needs so this is called theory is that so according to you know the, the nature of the people and theory you apply you can put your styles of motivation in your project right so with that i would like to conclude in today's videos on uh, models we discussed about three models uh, situation leadership model communication model and motivation models so tomorrow we'll talk about change you know other uh, models which is other four models we'll we'll give a video tomorrow okay so let me know your comments about this video let me know if you want to improve any particular area right so i think one of the person requested for a detailed videos on project management principles okay so i will definitely do that once i complete this entire pinbox series i am actually i am walking you through the entire pinbox 7 for you i so far we completed three sections right so we uh, t- talked about pinbox 6 and 7 the difference we talked about uh, project management principles 12 principle talked about and how it guides the project performance domains and then we talked about tailoring so this is the methods you know models methods and artifacts is the final section in pinbox 7 So let me complete that section, and then again I'll come back to the uh, project management principles of 12 points. But I'll try to talk in detail uh, uh, for those uh, areas. This uh, one uh, uh, person asked for it, so I'll try to produce that videos, post this completion of Pinbox 7 series. Okay. So thanks for uh, patient listening. I'll see you in next video. See you. Bye bye.